we are live. Yes. So, welcome to Hawkeye Episode 4, Partners. Am I right? Thoughts? And, as usual, spoilers for the MCU, including this episode. Leading up to this point, including this episode. And also some comic books. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, reacting to it, reviewing episodes and such. Especially videos made by New Rockstars, Screen Rant, Nerdist, CBR, Screen Crush, Black Nerd Comedy, IGN, Heavy Spoilers, Magic, Maggie, Emergency Awesome, Real James, and Jesse Gender. Not saying all of them did one or more videos on this specific episode, or even show. Just they're good for Disney Plus shows that tie into the MCU. So if this is the first of these videos by me that you watch, just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie. They're all in the 7 out of 10 to 10 out of 10 range, although I don't make any excuses for Iron Man 2. And I love every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus MCU shows. 10 out of 10 for WandaVision, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, Season 1 of Loki, Season 1 of What If, and the episodes of this show that have aired, including this one. And I have read all the issues of Matt Fraction, David Aha Hawkeye. Absolutely love it. This is another episode where there are some pacing issues. I guess that is probably going to be true of the last two episodes of this show as well. I guess really so far the only show where the... I, I don't really have any issues with the pacing of most of the What If episodes, but I know some others do. Now... No broad performances in this episode. Parts of the episode are dark. I think the acting performances in the episode are quite good. And there are great character moments for all characters in the episode. And everyone behaves in character. Now, Nando V Movies point out that grief is a main theme for phase four of the MCU and this one does explore the the grief that both Hawkeye, Clint Barton and Yelena feel over Natasha and Kate continues to be driven by wanting to live up to her father's you know how, how he was always giving everything to help other people and let's see. Yeah, some more funny, you know, jokes about how Kate is a millennial. Like Wisecrack pointed out. Let's see, was it also just phase yeah, phase four. And yeah, this is another episode where the MCU Disney Plus show a a yeah. A MCU Disney Plus show having problems handling the villain. <sighs> there are two episodes left. We are two-thirds of the way through. We still don't know who the main villain is. Like, I get, you know, they're building anticipation. It would be very surprising if Kingpin is... I mean, honestly, I wouldn't rule out that it's just going to be, like, the last, you know, at the very end of episode six, you know, someone walks up, walks into a room and says... The, the tracks of Mafia weren't able to stop him. What are we going to do now? And, you know, the camera pans up, revealing Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin. And, you know, he's going to, he's... Yeah, yeah, actually, I think he's just going to say, I know exactly what we're going to do. Cut, and then, you know, we have to wait for the next time. The, yeah. Maybe Val's going to be there, too. But yeah, you know, the, the, the MCU movies, a number of them have a villain problem, and now we see that the Disney Plus shows also do. I have no idea if the Netflix ones do. I have not watched them yet. Or I want to say, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I want to say that was like ABC. Haven't watched that one either yet. Am planning to. But... Yeah, you know, we, we don't know who the main villain is. We don't know quite what the plan of the main villain... Like, 
we know that the watch is important, but that's really about it. Like, yeah. And let's see. Yeah. So jumping into the notes for this specific episode, you know, yeah. So Jack, right after meeting Clint, talks to Kate. So this is the guy you idolize who teaches you how to use the crossbow? It's not crossbow. It's a bow and arrow. I'm not 12. I really love the scene where the four of them sit and talk. Like, I I would not think I would be saying that about a scene where it's literally just talking. No one draws a gun. No one makes, like, a, an overt threat. It's just a conversation, but just, it's so good. But you are working together. And Kate so badly wants Clint to agree to that way of phrasing it. And he does, and she smiles, and it's just, it's so sweet. And Eleanor brings up Natasha with Clint. Very harsh, not, yeah. And, you know, she tries to impress him, she can't lose Kate. And Clint is going to start looking into the watch, and the kids realize when Mom starts speaking German on the phone, it's because Clint is on the, what's, on the other end of the line? I want to say, not on the other line, because that's called waiting, whatever. I don't think I've ever seen you like this. Very sweet. Jack really makes Eleanor smile. It's absolutely adorable, and oh my god, she's going to be rude to be evil and betray him, isn't she? And Jack is surprised that his aphorisms are always wrong. I, I like how, like, you know, earlier it was just like, every so often he would, he would say something, and sometimes Kate would point out, you know, I forget... I want to say episode one, he said, well, this is the, uh, this is an unexpected surprise. And she's like, aren't all surprises unexpected? I, I don't know exactly what turn of phrase he was trying to use. I guess an unexpected... Uh, an unexpected joy or joyful... Yeah, something like that, you know. But, yeah, unexpected surprise. All surprises. That, that's what makes them surprises. And Clint ices his wounds with tape and what I'm told is frozen daiquiri mix. Yes, it's ice. And Jack says it must be terrible to be alone for the holidays, so Kate goes to cheer up Clint very sweet. And, like... The, the she brought movies because it was supposed to be movie marathon night. I did not think I was ever going to see Jeremy Renner's Clint Barton in a Christmas sweater. I think we the, the character does wear one in the Matt Fraction David Aha comic as well. And it's substantially better than the one his grandmother pre grandmother presented to him last year is Burgundy and for some reason she stitched across bows and arrows suck and he's like, I'm not gonna wear that. It's burgundy. Yeah, if you know the original joke I'm referencing here, you know I had to clean it up a little bit. This is this show and video is for a PG-13 audience, after all. And Kate accidentally used a permanent marker in writing out the plan, covers it with the Christmas tree, and, and you know, she starts a sentence, and she's like, this is where you're supposed to finish my sentence with the plan. Excellent montage of Clint and Kate talking craft. What about boomerang arrows? Why would I need a boomerang arrow? Because boomerang. In, you know, in the comics, it's Clint who's in favor of boomerang arrow, arrows. Kate, who doesn't think that they're useful, she comes around to it. I, I do really like, like you know, if 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 all your trick arrows were boomerang arrows, then we'd still have trick arrows. Coming, you know, they coming back at us. You'd have to, you'd have to dodge. Yeah. <laughs> she's so, she's, she's so sweet. It's, it's just, yeah. And Clint teaches Kate the coin snapping. I really like the, the smile when she, like, the first time she, like, misses completely and, like, Pizza Dog has to duck out of the way of, it, it wasn't gonna, like, hit him hard, but it, like, rolls at him or something. And... Clint tells Kate about when he was sent to take Natasha out. That is such a great character moment. You know, she's like, 
best shot you ever took. Because to her, this is still fun. This is, you know, this this is it's it's a calling. It's it's a it's an incredible thing. And he responds, "The shot I didn't take," because that really is like, of you know, yeah, he's he's shot, you know, countless people over decades of a career, but the time that of of all the times he was sent to assassinate someone, of all the times he's been asked to fire his bow and kill someone, the time that means the most is the time that he actively chose not to. You know, that's, it's such a great moment. You, it really, we really get a sense that, like, if that's the best, you know, if that, if that was the, the, you know, think about how much it must hurt to act, not, not every single time, I'm sure he didn't mind shooting Chitauri, for example, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like it means that at least some of the time when he shoots someone, it's because he's been trained to, he's told to, he has to. It's not that he thinks that it will actually make the world a better place. And Kate realizes that Clint is Ronan. I, I like that they made that, you know, she's smart enough. Now, now that she has enough information, now that she knows about, you know, how the, the yeah, the thing with Natasha, how, you know, Clint recruited Natasha, basically. Yeah, she has enough information, she pieces it together. My job has always been to hurt people. I hurt people. I'm a jerk. Excellent sound design on Clint taking out the hearing aid. Like, seriously, try to rewatch just the just the brief bit of him taking out. Try to mute it and rewatch it. It it won't have anywhere near the same impact. And Clint thinks about his time as Ronan, Natasha sacrificing herself. I forget who, but one of my, my fellow YouTubers pointed out that's you know, I mean, is is that every time that he like lays down to to sleep or or sits to to rest, he doesn't have a task to do. He thinks about that. That's that's the first thing that comes to his mind. That again, you know, that is a picture of a man in pain. I like to think of these as our arrows. Okay, go get our arrows. And Kazi gets in the car, checks the mirror, Clint is sitting there. I forget who, but one of my fellow YouTubers pointed out, that's actually usually, usually the guy sitting in the back seat there, that's the villain and the hero is in the, the front seat, you know, so it's, it's a nice reversal that points out that, you know, there are shades of gray here. Clint has hurt people that, you know, he maybe feels like he shouldn't. And Clint was very careful in finding every single weapon that Kazi stashed in the car. And he won't give the gun back. He tosses it. I, that was legitimately, like, <laughs> Clint is about to leave. And Kazi's like, can I have the gun back? And, and Clint responds as... You know, absolutely perfectly. What do you think? <laughs> and Kate gets really well along with the LARPers. Arrow retrieval mission complete. <laughs> if Clint isn't gonna hang out with these guys, can I? I th th these are they're they're just yeah. And Clint wants Kate to be lookout, but the moment he turns his back, she's gone, forcing him to be lookout. I I quite like you know Kate. She just has to get into the building, and it's a it's a perfect Kate Bishop solution. She you know there's an old guy who's about to get in, so she goes and helps carry the the stuff that he's getting. You know he's not going to be like you can't enter the building. You know the yeah. And, you know, she's she's in the elevator with the, the guy. She is literally telling every single person she encounters that she and Hawkeye are partners and most of them that they're friends. Like, it's... And, and just the, it's, you know... Can I tell you a secret? The guy on the other line is an Avenger. <laughs> it's so cute. And, you know, the old guy in the elevator is like, Yeah, I'm gonna go. 
and Clint tells Kate about the watch. It's Maya's apartment. <laughs> Such a great, like, I mean, really, we kind of should have seen it coming, that, that, but just such a great, and like, you know, Kate finds the, the pen, she's like, someone's looking into your family, and, you know, wrote down the names and the ages of just very, very, cr is that, Laura Barton, Clint's wife, got some information out of a tracksuit mafia did he gather information about her is that why he did it maybe like I, yeah anyway and I, I quite like you know I forget which of them says it first but I, yeah I think Kate says my you know I'm yeah, it's Maya's apartment. She's right here. I'm fighting her or something. And then Clint is like, nope, Maya's right here. I'm fighting her. And Kate gets halfway down the zip line and then, it's, you know, having trouble moving further. And at first she tries to, like, <laughs> like inch her way down the zip line by the... I mean, it's a solution, you know. And the... the uh, I think... Yes, Yelena accidentally, like, she's not trying to get Kate down there, but she, like, makes the, the wire bounce, and that gets Kate the rest of the way. Very cool fight with four people, good, like, choreography, keep it, like, there's at least one bit where we see all, f like, not, not in the same frame, but in the same shot. Like, we see two of them fight, and the camera goes over, and we see the other two fight. Not sure why Sam Fisher is fighting Clint. And it is really, I, I like that, you know, Yelena very intentionally does not kill Kate. She, I mean, I mean essentially what she does would have, if Clint hadn't gotten to her, it would have temporarily, you know, it, it would have, she, she got Kate out of the fight, basically, because she, you know, she's not going to be able to defeat both of them at the same time. And I also quite like, you know, Kate makes sure to get the gun out of there. And as others have pointed out, the, the, uh, Yelena had a shot. She was aiming the gun right at Clint, and she stood there for maybe two seconds, and then Kate, you know, dropped, me, dropped in. So, hypothetically, she could have chosen to shoot him, but she hesitated. She maybe does feel bad about it or do, is worried that she's been tricked or manipulated or something. And, you know, yeah, Kate is, is tethered and she, you know... No, I can't do the tethered voice. And, you know, she's like, pull me up. And he, you know, he cuts her loose, get out of here. And it's, it's a great, you know, he genuinely feels like he cannot keep her safe. And he is not comfortable with getting her killed. And she just comes right back up. And, you know, obviously her falling like that reminds him of Natasha. I really appreciate that they knew we, the viewers, could put that together without having to show us that footage again. They did play the score, though, which is, is really great. And... You know, obviously, Clint knew that, um, you know, he saw, he saw the Christmas light hang, lights hanging that broke her fall and meant that she didn't fall so far that she would get hurt. As Yeah. And, yeah, we get the reveal, you know, the masked attacker was Yelena. And she looks legitimately dangerous, scary, when last we saw she was, you know... Like, she's cool, she's a badass, but she's one of the good guys. Because here it's from Clint and Kate's POV. Like, honestly, if you played the, the like, a few a few notes of the Terminator theme over her, you know, over, as we see her face right after the mask comes off, she, I, I buy it. She's, she could play the Terminator, you know. I like that they give us a partial reveal that... 
Yelena is the attacker, you know, she uses an electrical attack, and others have pointed out it's the Red Room electrical attack, it's the, the red electrical attack, not the blue one that Natasha used in the, in, you know, yeah, in, in every MCU movie she's appeared in, you know, so, and Clint realizes, you know, they're dealing with a Black Widow, Go home, Kate. It's over. Now, some have theorized that maybe the LARPers will help against the bad guys at the end, like the people who live in the apartment building the Clint buys do in the comic. I hope so. There's a great... Yeah, I've already said I'm spoiling the, the Matt Fraction run. The, yeah, I, th I think it's the very last issue. It's one of the last things that happened. The very last issue of the that comic run. And the You know, one of the... I guess it's one of the, the the leaders of that group of Traction Mafia. He's like trying to intimidate. Uh, uh, is he talking to... I want to say he's talking to... What's her name? Penny, the redhead that Clint has a relationship with. And, you know, he's trying to intimidate. And so he's like, oh, you know, there's there's Ivan. He's like, He killed his own mother. And there's... Uh, 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 crap. What are some other... There's Zvadik, he's like, he, he guns down children, you know, all these, and, and as he says that, we see them, and they're like, you know, they were, like, knocked down by something, they're, like, about to, to get back up, and then it goes to what they see, and it's like these people from the, the, the apartment building, and they've got, like, baseball bats, and I want to say one has, like, a hockey you know, it's just stuff you'd find around, you know, not, not like heavy weaponry, but stuff you'd find around that you don't really want to be on the receiving end of, you know, it's stuff, stuff you'd find around an apartment building, you know, some, someone there plays baseball or, or something, you know, and, and they're like, stay down, neighborhood watch, just, yeah, that, that would be awesome, I, I think it would be great if the last episode, like, Kate and Clint look like they're overwhelmed by tracks with Mafia. There's maybe a dozen or more of them. And, you know, the door bursts open and in they run and, and you know, hit with the, the foam swords and everything. That that would be great. I've, I've seen some people say, you know, the, the LARPers really aren't that funny. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's a thing. There's a lot of mainstream stuff that thinks that like geek culture is just the the most ridiculous thing i don't think they're especially funny but i don't think it's too bad i i would dislike it if they were made out to be like evil or like actually stupid i think you could i think an argument could be made that they some of them are naive but they're not really stupid now, there's a theory that Laura Barton was a former agent, and, you know, that's her watch, which very well could be, you know, one of them cited, oh, she speaks German. I mean, are, is, is that, are there really that few Americans who speak at least one language other than English? Anyway. But, yeah, I, I think there is some chance that she is, you know, and, and one, one piece of evidence they cited was, when Tony first sees a very pregnant Laura Barton, he says, this is obviously an agent of some kind or some, something like that. Now, if they actually had planned it that far back, I'm not sure. But, you know, love him or hate him, there's definitely reasons to hate him. Joss Whedon's writing in MCU stuff, he, he likes to put in little hints and make references to, you know, the in Age of Ultron, like Bruce Banner could just say, "I can't believe we're doing this again," but instead he says, "I'm caught in a time loop," which you know that wasn't a thing that had happened by then. It hasn't. It happened to it. it Dormammu was trapped in a in a time loop. You know, the very next year actually. But yeah, that's the kind of thing that can happen in a comic book universe. So it's. It's a great little reference to, to just, yeah. Now, 
I had theorized that the, you know this episode would end with the introduction of a character or the show's characters meeting that character for the first time. In this case, Yelena ticks both boxes. It's her first appearance on this show, and you know Clint and Kate haven't seen her before, even though we, the audience, have. In this episode, Clint drinks coffee from a Thanos was right mug because he's he just really badly wants coffee, not because he agrees with what it says. In the comic, he's so desperate for coffee and such and such a train wreck that he drinks coffee right out of a pot. And another theory is maybe Laura Barton is a scroll or new one, and the watch could lead to the scroll. And Laura and Clint are trying to protect, you know, whoever that is. And yeah, that that would be cool, and and certainly, I mean, so far there haven't been that many scroll sightings, really. You know, Captain Marvel the movie introduces them. There, we we meet some scroll in we yeah. There's at least one scroll in WandaVision. The and and Talos and I forget the wife's name. I'm afraid the. Yeah, both appear in Spider-Man Far From Home. Yeah, I, th I think it would be cool if, if you know, we, we start meeting scrolls like, every couple of shows or movies, the, the way that it used to be that every so often we'd be introduced to a, another Infinity Stone, or told that there was an Infinity Stone, it's, you know, where, where there... Yeah, we, we knew... Okay, so we knew the... The scepter was powerful, but oh, it also houses an infinity stone, and it really is like you gotta love a a, a retcon. Like, well, we can't have two of the infinity stones being blue. I know if we really badly want the scepter to turn out to be a stone, how about in it's it's like it's the a blue casing for a stone, and the stone is a different color. Just, yeah. Now, Clint wasn't, like, wondering why is there a black... You know, he, he's just... I mean, he basically says, you know, someone important wants his debt, basically. Like, a black widow is like a hitman. You, just, you hire one. And, you know, he, he's talking about them as if they're still under control. So... Maybe he doesn't know what happened in the Black Widow solo movie. It is possible that he's just lying to Kate, but it didn't really come across to me like that was... Yeah. I mean, would... Would Natasha really not have told him? Well, let's see, let's see. So, they weren't... They didn't really have... Natasha and Clint didn't really have much to do with each other between Civil War and... Oh, actually, yeah, come to think of it, Civil War and then Endgame after the five years. I'm not sure, did... I don't think... I don't, I don't think they had contact between the... Yeah, be, yeah, between Civil War and Thanos doing the snap. So... Yeah, I guess, I guess she might not have told him about that in the, and, and they weren't together for very long before she sacrificed herself. Yeah, that, that tracks. Now, there is a theory that Laura Barton was Ronan before Clint, and it was her, not him, killing Maya's dad. Very well it could be, yeah. I, I love all this theorizing. I, I this is this is one of the many reasons I love comics and adaptations of of such. Like you can you can just you know you can spend your your commute just thinking about way maybe it's this or this and just yeah absolutely love it. That is everything I had written down to say. Yeah, that is everything that I had to say. So, I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and viewing, and I will catch you next time.